I think that an artist finds himself always fighting against what he became famous for. I often have made the statement that I don't make statements. I have vowed that I would never paint the Indian. I'm very proud of being one quarter Lucenio, but you can't be anything if you're a quarter. The artist must always quest for truth. And I have even believed that truth is maybe a little overrated. Fritz Scholder was the most famous, prolific, and influential figure in the history of Indian art. I have never called myself an Indian artist. Everyone else has. I really don't know what Indian art is. He was also the most controversial. Scholder was born in 1937. His father, who served as an administrator for BIA boarding schools, was half native, and his mother was white. I grew up in a very non-Indian environment, mainly because my father was the product of the old Indian school system. And if you know anything about the old Indian school system, you know that it was a brainwashing uh, technique, in many cases, of trying to make Indians white. I was real shy, and all I wanted to do was stay in my room and draw so I wouldn't have to deal with people. But in retrospect, I always knew what I had to be. From the beginning of his journey, Shoulder's self-confidence set him apart. But this didn't mean that his direction was always clear. In 1961, I was receiving recognition. But it was a real struggle because you couldn't sell painting. In the early 60s, the Rockefeller Project was sponsoring programs aimed at energizing Indian culture. As an enrolled member of his tribe, Shoulder was invited to participate. And I'd never thought of myself as an Indian artist. But I thought, well, why not? You know, why not go and... and so I accepted. An MFA followed and he was soon invited to join the faculty of the dynamic new Institute of American Indian Arts. And we had a ball because they were really neat students. I, I really dig students. And uh, we had Bob Dylan records blasting in the studios uh, day and night. The faculty and students became very close and it was a beautiful teaching experience for a time. Shoulder encouraged his Indian students to be open to a wide variety of visual expressions. At the same time, some of his students were portraying Indians in new ways that profoundly influenced him. When I first came to Santa Fe, I was painting landscapes, but I realized that everyone else was painting the Indian. And so I vowed that I would never paint the Indian. After being here a few years and absorbing the Southwest, the Indian culture, and what it was all about, I had to retract that vow, for I realized that someone needed to paint the Indian differently. To put this in perspective, from the 1930s through the early 1960s, this is what Indian studio painting had looked like. There were lots of rules, and those who broke them had trouble getting in to the few shows that did include Indian artists. But a revolution was taking place in Santa Fe. I guess my frustration came to a head one winter night in 1967, when I decided somebody needs to paint the Indian differently. Because here is a subject matter that is probably the world's worst cliche, at least in this country. And when I did my first Indian, uh, people just freaked out. Uh, I knew they would. The first Indian had green hair. It, <laughs> it was uh, pretty abstract. Uh, and then I stenciled in, just to make sure people knew what it was, Indian. 
on the background, lettered it in. So began Shoulder's Indian series, his most famous and infamous body of work, and an important contribution to a radically different generation of Indian art. One trader said, Shoulder has single-handedly destroyed Indian painting, which of course was a compliment as far as I was concerned. <laughs> Shoulder left the Institute in 1969. Celebrated as both an artist and a personality, he became wealthy and traveled the world, pursuing his interests. I truly believe the artist must be an intellectual. Painting is a Renaissance activity. In a way, it shouldn't even be happening. And yet I say that tongue in cheek. Painting today is probably even more important than ever before. I work in a trance. I just see what happens. But it's truly a sensual activity. The canvas moves when you touch it. The brushes are flexible. The color is luscious and the paint is buttery. And it's a turn on. You really, you are creating, you are being God, if you will, because it's all up to you. And in a way, you can't make a mistake. Because if you don't like a certain area, you cover it over. It is completely up to you to be your own worst critic. I take each work to the brink of disaster and then pull it back until it defies me to go any further and then I know it's done. He also thoroughly enjoyed his role as a larger-than-life provocateur. I'm interested in someone reacting to the work and I don't much care if they react negatively or positively as long as they react. And I'm pleased to say that in most cases, people do react. There are very few gray areas. Uh, either they love me or hate me, which is nice. He was celebrated as a genius and reviled as an opportunist. Shoulder not only attracted controversy, he thrived on it. Resistant to the expectations of others, he answered always and only to himself. To be different for the sake of being different means nothing. You must walk that tightrope between accident and discipline. Accident by itself, again, so what? Discipline by itself is boring. By walking that tightrope and putting down something on a canvas that conceivably is unique in coming from your guts, you have a chance of making marks that, of course, will live longer than you. Fritz Scholder died in 2005. Today, we continue to argue about who he was and what his work meant and means, whether we're Indian or not. And he would have loved that. I'm sure I'm prejudiced, but fine art is still the best racket around. 